Hello YouTube. By request, I thought I'd go ahead and put this video together on how to draw fabric folds and so forth. And um, I was just kind of goofing around with this yellow USA Gold pencil I had on my desk. And, and I kind of doodled a few little examples here that I thought I might as well just talk about before I get into the actual um, demonstration on how to draw these uh, folds and so forth. Um, let me show you a few of my drawings that actually incorporated uh, fabric. In order to draw fabric, you really have to master, or I, I shouldn't say master, but you should feel pretty confident with shading going from light to dark. So for example, uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll zoom in here a little bit. If you were to start really light, put down some value. And then, as you're going from left to right in this case, you start increasing your values so that it gradually goes from light to dark. And you can do it the opposite direction too. You can go from dark to light. But the whole point is to be able to learn how to do this. And of course, I'm going to get to a point here where I really have to press down to get the darkest values. So as you go from one end of the spectrum to the other, you want to gradually go from light to dark and dark to light. And you shouldn't, unless it's what you wanted to do in the first place, in whatever you're drawing, you should not see a, a line, a hard line. It should be just a nice, soft, gradual flow from dark, and then it just kind of goes into lighter and lighter and lighter until you reach a point where you can't get any lighter, and it's the, the color of the paper itself, or the white of the paper I should say, since it's really not a color. Okay, so as you can see here, just a brief example, where you're just going dark to light. And I can keep playing with this to perfect it even more and more and so forth. But the whole point is you need to be able to do this. Okay. Because when you're dealing with fabric and folds and so forth, you can see here what I did is I, I kind of drew something that is supposed to give kind of a 3D impression that there is a, a, a folding cloth here. It goes up, then down, up and down. And the whole key is to understand where is the light coming from? Now in this case, the light is coming from the direction the pencil is pointing. This direction, that way. Okay? And so, because it's coming from this direction, you need to draw where you have light shining here. This is your highlight. But then where the light doesn't hit, which is in here, you want to get that dark. But notice that as you get closer to the top of the fold, you're getting lighter and lighter because it's getting closer to getting exposed to the light. And then as it goes and crests over the top, it starts to go light. And then as you're down here and you're going to go back up again, of course, you would start to go from light 
to dark, dark, dark. Now this is just a simple roller coaster fold here. Here what I did was I, I drew some lines, two or three lines, and then within the lines I darkened it and then as I would come out from this, we'll call this a crease in the fold of the fabric, as you're coming up you need to go lighter to the top in a nice graduation transition from dark to light. And it all depends also on how severe the crease is. In this case, this is a very severe crease in the fabric. This is really like crunched like that, okay? And so you can see that it goes from dark to light very quickly. However, if it was gradual like this right here, it would go from dark to light in a slow progression. So it all depends on what it is that you're trying to achieve. And if you're looking at a reference, it's going to tell you what you want to achieve. Here's a case where the crease is actually whiter, and then it has more of a gradual to the top. And here it's, the crease is even more severe, so it goes from dark to light really quick. But you always want to make sure that you don't have a line, because there is no line in nature. You, what you want to do is you, you want to go from whatever that dark area of no light and into the light with, with gradations and how severe the gradations are, how fast it goes from dark to light depends on the severity of the fold. So if I was to use this paper for example, if the fold is like this, well you can see based on where my light is coming from how wide the dark area is in the center. And then you can see the, light, the light's coming from over there, the left side. So as I crease it like this, you'll notice, if I can hold this with one hand, maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Let's try it without the drawing in here. And I'm going to get that crease in there one way or the other. It'd be easier if I had fabric. Okay, but in a case like this, you can see that it, it, it's dark here, but notice that it starts to get light as soon as the light hits it. So you're going to go from dark, then you're going to go lighter. It got my thumb in the way. And then you're going to go lighter, lighter, lighter up to the top where it's really bright white. And then as it goes to the other side, you can see that it's darkening right here as it goes down the opposite side. See how it gets darker again here? You have to visualize where that light's coming from or look at your reference photo and that will tell you uh, all that you need to know. Now what I've done here is I've just printed off a little sample of a, a folded cloth. I don't know if it's like a bed sheet or, or cotton tabletop or whatever. And then I've sketched a few lines right here. And I'll go up a little bit more here. I can't get too close. Now you'll notice that I look for all the shapes. So I saw this here. And then I saw this loop-de-loop. -loop, so I drew that really light with my pencil. And of course there's that crease right there. And I put that right there. And the, sh the shade where it's a darkened, shaded area where there's less light, I also mark that with the very light line. So it reminds me that I'm going to be shading up in here. And that's my crest. That's the top. That's this top part here, which I'm going to want to make that light or use nearly the white of this paper. And then it's going to go back down to um, shading in this area right here. Okay. And there's a little shading going on right here so I'm going to actually be going down so it's going to be like coming from the white of this paper and then I'm going to slowly start adding some value down here so that it will give the impression that it went from the top back down so I have to gradually go to the top and then from the top gradually work my way down to where it goes from light to dark you can see that I've also marked this circular area here. 
I've marked the crease in the sheet, which is very light, but although it's light, you're going to notice that there is a little darker value on this part of the sheet than there is here, and I need to make sure that when I draw this, that this will be slightly darker than here. And you can see that I've got all the main creases marked off. There's this right here, this right here, and so forth. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw this. Um, I know I'm going to end up moving my paper around, and I like to be able to do that when I draw, be able to go sideways and so forth. However, by doing that, I know I'm going to end up getting off camera. So, I'm going to tape this down. It's going to make it a little more difficult for me to achieve what I want to do here because I can't move my paper now and I'm right handed so I'm going to have to be doing shading with my hand you know twisted and so forth but I'm going to do the best I can and this is I'm going to start off I'm going to narrate parts of it in slow and then once I've explained a few things I'll probably speed up sections because even the draw just this little bit is going to take more time than you're going to be wanting to watch on this video well, we better get right to it. Okay, so I notice I have this dark area right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start shading that part in. I want to get my dark values in first. And then I'm going to blend from those dark areas upward to the top of the crest, which is right here. So first, and by the way, Make sure that when you're laying down your graph graphite, you're not pressing into the paper because you're going to be using your blender and your eraser a lot in order to get the effect you want of folds. Now, as you see, I've just drawn in this dark part here. Now, when I blend it, it's going to become lighter and I'll have to add more to it. But I'm going to use one of these paper blenders like this one here. And I'm going to go ahead and start blending smooth out this shaded area here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and push this into uh, high speed because there's a lot to do here. So what I've done here is I start off and I've started with a little bit of the dark area. You always want to put the dark area down first. At least that's the approach I take. And then with the blender, you'll want to push that dark up into the lighter area and use that to do your uh, gradation from uh, gradual from dark to lighter to lighter as you're going up the slope and when we get to the very top you'll notice that there is kind of a rim of dark shading just before it gets to the very top so I'm going to make sure that I get that in and I'm doing that right now I'm just marking it off right there you see where I marked it and I want to make sure that I don't miss that as I'm going from dark to light and I'm going to have to go over this several times as you will see now what will often happen is that while we try to achieve the same tonal value as the photograph the reference photograph initially you may end up drawing it what may look like you've got the right tonal quality but then what happens is as you start drawing the surrounding areas you'll find that it's not really as dark as you thought it was and then you'll need to come back and and add more graphite and so forth now here again I'm taking graphite from the darkest area in the bottom I added more graphite and then I'm pushing it up the hill you might say you want to kind of visualize and sense that you are actually moving uphill because then that kind of tells your brain to start lightening up on that pit, on that blender and uh, as you start to get the feel for it you'll be able to start feeling how it's gradually going up and then it's crowning at the very top. Now here I'm pointing out the dark area that is at the very top and just before it starts to go lighter and then goes to, to the lightest value itself. So I'm adding that in. If you're going for a realistic drawing, you really do need to draw what you see, not what you think it should be. 
which is a mistake that a lot of uh, beginning artists will do is they, it, it, let's say they want to draw a mouth or whatever, and instead of drawing what the mouth actually looks like on the drawing, they instead draw what they think a mouth should look like, and then it doesn't look really well. Now, as you can see here, what I've done is I've drawn the dark area on the very top and then blended it a little bit to lightly go into the white area. And now I'm working on the opposite side of that fold. Again, I'm starting with the darkest part of the inside of that fold, and then I'm going to blend it out because the surrounding areas are going to be lighter. And this is going to give you the uh, impression that it is going from a, a divot, a, a hole in the fabric, a fold in the fabric, and it's coming out into the light. As you see, I'm just carefully blending lighter as I go out of that particular um, debit inside of the cloth itself and, and just blending it out so that if it, it looks as if it comes up, over, and down. And as it went down, it's going out of the light again. So I'm going down and shading darker on the opposite side. And by doing that, it will give the impression that the cloth has gone up, over, and down. And that's what you want. As you blend, the dark areas will get lighter. So you will need to go back in and add more graphite to the dark areas. And then again, uh, start pushing the graphite around to get all the, the areas um, that need value uh, darker. And at the same time, um, I'm using the blender to make sure that it's just not going directly from dark to light as if there was a hard line, but it diffuses it so that it looks smooth. It's a smooth transition from dark into light. So you just keep using your blender and you just go over the edges of the dark area and you work your way around pushing that graphite where you want it. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just cleaning up a little bit. I noticed that I'm, I'm kind of crossing the line a little bit, and, and so uh, I decided I wanted to uh, clean that up with a pencil eraser, one of those little stick erasers. Here I'm drawing that dark shadow. Uh, I tried to do it with the blender. I didn't have enough graphite on it, and uh, so I'm going to use the tip of my pencil here, put the little bit of that value that you can see on the reference photo in there, and then I'll just go in there with my blender and, and clean that all up. Now here again, I'm, I'm working my way down the other side of the slope there and getting that value to match the reference as best I can. For this demonstration though, I'm not going to go for perfection and you'll, you'll definitely find out why uh, shortly as I point out that um, the grain of the table started showing up through the graphite. We're not there yet, but I'm warning you ahead of time. Uh, I'm using copier paper, and I took that right off the copier, so it's not even the best paper to use. Okay, so I kind of cleaned that edge up. You notice that there's a little light highlight right on the very top where the light catches the very top. Um, I will try not to draw over that, but a lot of times what will happen is I'll end up getting graphite over that area, and if so, it's not a big deal because you'll just take your eraser and you'll just uh, clean up that, that very top. Now I'm going to concentrate again on the darkest part of the next pattern. So I'm in the next pattern over now, and I'm concentrating on that dark part that, that's getting less light on that fabric that's that's facing us. And notice that I'm I'm actually going to be drawing it pretty much the same shape that I see on the reference, which is kind of a long um, triangle shape. So I'm laying down that graphite to match that shape, and then I will start pushing it around again with the blender. Now can you see that the table pattern going through that? That's the problem. Um, now I've got this weird pattern. I don't want that in a realistic drawing. So one, I won't be drawing on top of a wood grain table. And two, I won't be using copier paper. I'll be using much higher quality, heavier pound paper so that I don't have 
that strange pattern coming up, I'll be using a smooth or bristle. Now again, I'm, I'm pointing out that I'm coloring or darkening um, the darkest area. I'm putting graphite down at the very darkest places that I see on the reference. And then again, I'm going to start blending and then pushing that graphite up the hill so that it goes from dark and goes lighter and lighter as it goes up to the top. Interesting though, the top here is another dark area. And so I'll, I'll actually be going from dark to this kind of crescent light, it was probably reflective light of some sort, and then back into a dark area again. But you can see that I'm pushing it from the dark into the lighter area. So I'm not actually using a pencil to draw the light areas, but I'm actually using my blender to do most of the work in drawing the fabric. And I use the blender extensively for fabric work, or I'll use the end of a Q-tip. You can use napkin, Kleenex. There's all kinds of blenders you can use. This happens to just give me a little more control in a confined space. That's why I'm using this uh, paper blender. And as you can see, I left the, the white area um, with, with uh, I left the light area that I'll go back to later. And I'm focusing back on the darkest areas again. And I'm going to push that graphite up the hill there, up to that area where I had mentioned was that reflective light on the edge. And I'll end up having to clean that up. Okay, I'm now working on that ridge. And you can see I'm going from dark using the blender. I'm going to start pushing it up and over so that it looks really nice and gradual. And it will give the impression that we've reached the top of the fabric and then we're working our way back down the opposite side. So you can see that I'm using the blender. I get all the graphite for the blender from the dark areas so that I can push it into the light areas. And at the same time, of course, I'm going to want to blend that dark area as smooth as possible. Unfortunately, um, we have that pattern showing through. Okay, I'm going to do a little cleanup. Now I'm pushing the graphite up the hill. You'll notice that I've covered the whole top, but yet there's a highlight there that I'm going to need to return. And so I'm using this Tombow Zero eraser. I realized that when I started using this eraser that I really didn't sharpen it, give it a nice sharpen point, but that's okay because I can come in there and I can add graphite to make that highlighted area a little little more narrow. So here I'm just pushing it with the blender to get it up right up to that highlighted area. Now I, I realized at this point that it's still not highlighted enough. Um, I showed this technique before, use a little piece of tape. This is one thing you can do and you can just draw over the area if you're looking for a thin line. And there you go. Um, but what I ended up doing, unfortunately, in this case, is I left some kind of residue or something, and you're going to see me fight with that a little bit um, shortly. But right now, I'm just going back to shading in the dark area. I'm trying to get that darker, get it as close to the value of the reference photo as best I can. And just remember, it's, you know, as far as the approach I go with, is I start from the dark and I work to the light. I start from the dark, I work from the light. When I start from the dark, I add the graphite, I take a blender, and then I push it into the lighter surrounding areas. So I'm not only smoothing the dark area, but then I am also using that graphite to give me the gradation 
going up and over the fabric folds. In the process, though, of doing that, of course, is I'm going to end up with um, uh, what you call um, a lighter dark area, and I'll have to go back and add more dark and so forth. Now, here I'm trying to clean up this area. Apparently, I had some kind of residue or something, and I couldn't get it off the paper there. You can see there's these little specks, and I'm trying to dab it off with my eraser there. Um, but it's it doesn't seem to want to come off. I'm going to get more aggressive with it in a second here. You can see these little tiny bits that shouldn't be there, and I'm kind of going over it going, why is this not coming off? And, you know, you work and rework a drawing. That's just par of the course, par for course. Here I'm trying again. I'm going to try to get this off. I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to use that pin again and just just swath the whole thing off to get as much as I can out of there. I am trying for perfection that whenever I go for realistic drawings that's what you want to try to do is you see I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to scratch the thing off see I could, I could even move it a little bit and it's kind of frustrating me it's kind of it's kind of like, you know, maybe I should not have used the tape in this particular example because I was using this um, copier paper and the result wasn't exactly what I, I wanted. Now here what I've done is I'm, I'm lightening up areas with my eraser here to match what I'm looking at at the reference photo. You can see that reflective light. And then I'm pushing again graphite from the dark into the light areas. Right in the middle of that white, that uh, highlighted crest is a darker area. And I'm, I'm putting that in to match what I see in the actual reference photograph. Again, I apologize for the wood grain pattern that's in the background there. Unfortunately, um, I can't do much about that. But... I believe that I can get tell you, you know, the things you need to know to draw fabric uh, using this example nonetheless. I believe you can actually see the fabric coming out of my drawing here a uh, little by little. And when you're doing realistic pattern or fabric drawing and so forth, you're you're going to spend a lot of time. And that's why I only wanted to do a small example and um, I have to speed this up because it actually turned out to be like an hour long. And so I've sped it up so that it's just barely over, I believe, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So that way we can get this whole thing in there. Now again, you know, I've I started with the darkest area of the section I'm working on, which is that that dip you see here. And I'm using the graphite from it to do the lighter area around it as it goes up and over into the light. And as I'm drawing this with the blender, that's how I, I actually sense that I'm, I'm in a pocket and then I'm moving up and over the pocket. And just having that sense that I'm actually in the pocket helps me to draw this more realistically than if I was to just think of this as a two-dimensional object. I actually, I actually uh, perceive it as a three-dimensional uh, object as I'm actually drawing it. And it just happens to help me to, to get the illusion across when I'm finally finished with my drawings. And remember I had mentioned that there are no lines in nature. So when I'm, I'm drawing, and you can see there's lines in my you know, beginning sketch, well, I need to blend those lines into my drawings so that they don't stand out as lines. But instead, you want it to be where it goes from one value to another. So in this case, from the ridge, it goes from a light value down into a darker value. And so that's more of a soft edge. And that's what I'm doing here with the pencil is I'm diffusing the line 
and then blending it out with my pencil tip, adding more graphic to the darkest parts of the pocket here, and then I'll use my blender again to smooth the dark area and then to also add graphite to the surrounding areas um, more gradually. So there I'm going to use I'm going to smooth it and use that to continue drawing around it as well. And that's where my blender gets its fuel from, its graphite to draw with. Here I'm drawing up and over using what I got from inside that dark pocket area. And that's pretty much how I approach it. There are different ways people can approach this, I'm sure. Um, when I kept working at this over and over and over again in all my drawings, uh, trying to get comfortable drawing fabric, it wasn't until I actually started sensing that I was really moving my blender over fabric rather than on a piece of paper that it actually started to take shape and become more realistic that I was in fact drawing realistic fabric. Now here I'm cleaning up a little bit with my eraser because I want to make sure I get that nice little highlight that runs along the top ridge and that acts as the demarcation between the top ridge and that little valley down below there. I need to make sure that that's showing there. And again, as you, you draw surrounding areas, you start to realize that you need to make your old dark areas darker again. So I'm back to adding more darkness to the dark areas here. And although you probably can't tell because I'm narrating over what I've done, that I'm frustrated that I didn't consider the wood grain that's underneath my paper because I would have liked that dark area to be smooth, not with these white grain lines going across. But we can just imagine, though, in this case, that it's one of those cheap cotton blankets, you know, the ones that you really don't want to sleep with. Now here, see, I'm trying to get that stuff off, and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to wipe that whole area clean and pretty much start over. And there, see, I, I still had more of it. It just, I didn't get it all. And I'm trying to push it out of there. And notice that when I'm pushing the, the graphite up, I'm leaving that white line there. I want to keep that, that highlight there the best I can. And I could go over with the um, erasers and add more highlight to the top of that rim because it is lighter in the reference photo than what I currently have. So this is where I would come in with an eraser and just kind of take a little bit off the top there to get me that highlight that I'm looking for. And if I was going to save this as a masterpiece, I would, I would work this thing to perfection. It's just one of those things where you have to be really, really patient with your, um, your work. If you want to achieve realism, you're going to have to spend a lot of time on very small, mundane things. And um, this particular drawing here, though, I have no intentions of framing it or anything. This is, this is being done strictly for you. So um, I'm not pushing it to total realism. But I'm giving you everything you need to know that I believe you need to know to draw uh, fabric, folded fabric. I'm um, here I'm explaining the grain is showing through. And that's why I can't get that smooth. So be sure that you draw on a good surface and use good paper if you're planning on keeping it, keeping your drawing. Now here I'm explaining, or I would have been explained, drawing over the folds. 
And here is a little pocket fold. I'm shading it in. And you're going to see it just start up here to look like the reference. I'm going from the dark up and over into the light. Originally, when I did this video, I narrated as I was drawing. And then I realized that I needed to re narrate over it. And that's what I'm doing at this time. And that's why you see me kind of explaining things, although you don't hear me uh, while I'm doing it. So I'm trying to keep up with the speed of this. But as you can see, that I'm shading both sides of that crest of that big loop of fabric. And then I'm making sure that I add a little more graphite to the dark area. And then I'm going to push it over the top again. And you're going to do this until you achieve the exact tonal values that you're looking for. You go from where there's less light up to where there's more light, back down to where there's less light, and you create the illusion of fabric and folds. Okay, and that's that's how you do it. Pretty simple, really. It just takes a little bit of practice. So um, uh, that's I'm going to go ahead and stop right here because. I don't have anything to add to what I'm doing other than, you know, just keep going until you, you can get the darks equal, the lights equal, everything, depending on how realistic you want to go. This particular drawing here, for example, is not, it's just short of meeting this quality, which means I need to get darker and darker and darker, especially in here. And I need to uh, not have this pattern showing in here, and I need to blend. So every time you blend, it's going to get lighter. But I believe you can see the folds and everything. Okay, well, hey, if you like this um, demonstration on how to draw fabric folds, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and leave comments down below. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.